a lot of new access control customers are asking me what is the easiest way to tie in their fire alarm system with the access controller so in the case of a fire all the doors will remain open allowing people to exit rapidly the building and if i take a trip back down memory lane i remember our first generation controller the ac41 not having a dedicated circuit for that like the 42 and 62 which are the second generation one could still use the auxiliary cassette install the fire interface relay into it and specify in within command how long the door should be open for however as you can imagine if there's any issues with the software that means that the process might fail so as all the experts agree in such scenarios it's better to make sure that the software is not acting as a middleman between your fire alarm system and your doors so with the second generation access controllers you'll have at the bottom a fai which is short for fire alarm interface that will allow you to hook this up to your fire system via an either normally open or normally closed relay so in case that flips in case of a fire all the doors that are currently being powered by the access controller will no longer receive power thus open up so that's simply what it does you can't configure which doors it doesn't actually change the state of the doors it's purely from a hardware perspective looks at each door that's running wet wet meaning that the access controller is providing power to that door and makes it a dry circuit it is very important to realize that a lot of the access controllers on the market only run dry so they expect you to install a power supply in that case when you're using your own power supply remember that the fire interface relay should be going into that because from an access controller perspective there's no way that we can drop power it doesn't supply power to the maglock is the power supply that's between it and the door so as a rule the fire interface should be installed as close as possible to the door itself to the last element that's supplying the door with power secondly you also need to consider scenarios in which the door itself is not a fail safe maglock but a fail secure strike just to take a step back fail safe systems leave the door open in case there's no power while fail secure systems won't allow a person to open the door unless power is explicitly supplied in a building you should have a mix and match of those because if everything is fail safe then all that somebody needs to do is to trigger a fire alarm all the doors open and they can make their way through the building so there are certain areas of the building like the fire escapes that are usually marked fail safe and this is again to allow emergency services to come in the building while other areas let's say the it closet room or any sort of secure areas will be fail secure so in case an intruder comes in they cannot for example cut your power and enter the facilities so remember if a door needs power in order to open and the fire alarm interface told the access controller do not supply power then people cannot actually enter that particular door now with most fail secure locks like strikes you have the option to do what's called manual egress where people cannot enter the door from the outside because again there's no power supply to the lock but people inside are able to leave this is very similar to you in a hotel room remember you have to badge in press the lock if the card matches the information then you're actually allowed to enter the room while on the other side if you want to exit your hotel room you don't need to do anything there's no PIR Rex, there's no button you just press on the handle and the handle itself purely mechanically opens the door and this is what's called again manual egress so if your doors do have manual egress you shouldn't really care much if the system is fail safe or fail secure so let me zoom in on the fire alarm interface on the right hand side you see they're marked as f plus f minus and fp are the terminals where you will bring the relay from your fire alarm and i will leave a document here to describe how you do that on top with the l marks is what's called latching the main reason that we want to latch 
is that in case the fire rages through the building and destroys the wires, we might not want to be in a position where the doors are again supplied with power just because the wire itself is destroyed. So with the latch, the system remembers the state and will restrict power until somebody manually, usually using a key, will come and restore the system. So latching again is a way to make sure that any fire damage will not go against the system trying to keep the doors open. Now on the left hand side with normally closed, normally open and calm, you'll actually be able to daisy chain multiple access controllers. I would say that from my perspective, you should be looking at having wires run to each access controller just to make sure that there's no single point of failure. But again, this is purely a hardware daisy chain. Even if the access controller itself is not operating properly, as long as it is powered, the circuits should be able to work across multiple devices.